You mentioned uh, the missing documents and so on, but I mean, the, the position of Audit Scotland remains uh, clear. Uh, they say that the email that was unearthed uh, that covers the um, exchange on the 8th and 9th of October 2015 uh, confirms that ministers approved the award of the FML contract. Uh, but Audit Scotland's position is but there remains insufficient documentary evidence to explain why the decision was made to proceed with the contract, given the significant risks and concerns raised by CML. So I obviously uh, respect that that is Audit Scotland's view. Uh, further, I understand why Audit Scotland uh, has that view. Um, respectfully, though, as a minister of many years now, as First Minister now, who regularly uh, takes decisions and communicates those decisions and has those decisions recorded. Um, I, I take a, a different view of that. I have uh, reviewed that I wasn't uh, party to the material of the 8th of October 2015 at the time. Um, that doesn't mean, you know, I don't take every decision in the Scottish Government. I am ultimately accountable for every decision that the Scottish Government takes. But I have reviewed uh, all of that, as I say, on several occasions in recent uh, times and asked myself if I think both the decision was a reasonable one at the time, based on what ministers knew at the time. Of course, if you look through the prism of what we now know, uh, of course everybody would take a, a different view of that, but based on what ministers uh, knew at the time, I have uh, assessed in my own mind whether I think that decision was reasonable, and also the recording of that decision. Uh, very often when uh, ministers are presented with a submission seeking a decision for a minister and it lays out all of the, the basis on which that decision uh, would be taken, uh, the minister will simply uh, approve on the, the basis of uh, what is in the submission. They won't necessarily repeat all of the the, the reasons and the basis for that decision. Often the lengthiest um, the lengthiest responses a minister will give to a submission are where they're not agreeing with the, uh, the, the basis uh, of what they're being asked to do and they're taking a different decision and therefore they'll record the reasons for that. Or if they're taking a decision but on a different basis to what is set out. The, the 8th of October submission sets out very clearly the risks uh, of the decision, uh, the basis uh, of uh, the CMAL concerns, it has a, attached to it a note from the CMAL uh, chief executive. It has attached to it uh, an earlier email from uh, the chair uh, at the time of CMAL. Uh, but it also sets out very clearly uh, the, the mitigations that had been negotiated uh, with FML uh, around the, the builder's refund guarantee in particular. And it sets out, and indeed it attaches to uh, the submission, the drafts of the, the voted loan uh, letter and a separate letter from uh, government to uh, CMAL with assurances for CMAL. So it sets out clearly the basis on which that decision uh, could be taken. It also has uh, within it uh, sort of references to the fact that this was, in CMAL's opinion, notwithstanding their concern, the best deal that could have been negotiated with FML, it has opinions around uh, the fact from, and, and these are opinions from CMIT, CMAL executives, that some of these issues they may have encountered with any uh, bidder. So taking all of that into account, uh, there is a basis for that deci decision. And in uh, approving it, the minister approving it is effectively saying that they are taking that decision on the basis of all the material that has been set out. OK, well, as I say, the, um, the view of Audit Scotland is that there is insufficient documentary evidence and paragraph 5.1.9 of the Scottish Public Finance Manual spells out the kind of uh, recording that there needs to be of uh, those decisions.